holding companies more videos more commentary more stuff and a lot of it is very interesting I was watching a video today about should you or should you not create LLC's for real estate or if you buy a property and you put your LLC in there, then there's titling fees. And I was just stunned. Then I began to realize that they're making content for average people. They're making content for someone who may buy one, two, three houses, which is excellent, which is cool. But they're not making content for someone who wants to become wealthy in real estate. The content is for people who want to do okay in real estate. And once again, that is fine. It's not what I'm looking for and it's not what I'm going to teach. So if you have a real estate company or you have real estate ambitions, first thing you should do is create a holding company. Now, this holding company is never, ever going to own any real estate. Nope. What you will do is create baby comp baby llc a baby llc b baby llc c you will create placeholders let's say you go out and acquire a piece of property and i'm actually going to teach you how you can do this so you have your holding company and let's say you start off with baby llc a what you're going to do is go out and buy a trailer. I know you're laughing, but stick with me. It's going to get real good. You find some property. I don't care where. It doesn't matter because this is a preset strategy. Some property that you can pay off cash, a $5,000 trailer, uh, a dilapidated barn, whatever you can get your hands on that is property. Then what you do is you pay the fees. And let, let's talk about that. I saw a lot of talk about fees outside of California, New York, and maybe a few other places. The total cost of regulatory fees and even let's say you established LLC. Let's say you even go through LegalZoom or somebody. We're talking about 400, 500 bucks for the year. If that is throwing you, you're not. You don't have a wealth mindset that that should be nothing to you. And I'm not trying to talk bad about anyone, but if you're freaking out about 500 or 2000, you don't really have expectations that you're going to do well in real estate. So you go ahead and you get the holding company, which is going to cost you fees. It's going to cost you money to set up unless you know how to do it yourself. Then you're going to create the LLC a, which will be created, uh, which will be organized by your holding company. Then now we get to the property. You find a piece of shit property, you find something. Then once you get the title and everything, you go to a bank. Now you're going to have to do some lab work here. You need to find a bank that's going to give you a commercial loan. And you need to also find a bank that reports to Dun and Bradstreet and all these other commercial reporting agencies. Now you go in and say, look, I own this property free and clear. I want to put the title of this property up as collateral and pay you back your own money. I'll leave it in the bank account and I'll just pay. So what you do is you establish a track record of buying property 
in your LLC. Now, why this is important. Typically, when you're trying to go out and buy property in your LLC, no one wants to give you any money because your LLC doesn't have tax forms or it may be brand new. So what you're going to do is run this strategy and it's going to take you a year or two. Let me say this again. It's going to take you a year or two to develop business credit of you buying real estate in your LLC. So you go ahead and you do this trailer, whatever. And this is why I always say start early. Then after you pay that off, you go to the bank, you run your credit and say, look, what's the largest loan based upon my history with you that you can extend me? Now, banks don't like to make small commercial loans. I think the minimum is like $50,000. And if they say, okay, well, we're looking at your credit. We're looking at the fact that we have a working relationship with you. Uh, we can do 55,000. Okay. All right. So you go out and you, you take this loan and you find a house that's for 55,000. Unless you're in a place like North Carolina or some other place where you can go out, there, there will be houses that will fit that price range. They're just going to be out. But once again, you ain't going to worry about that. Find you a piece of house, something, whatever you can. Take the 55,000, buy it and get yourself a renter. Now, what you're going to do, and we're going to talk about how you get your renter. You're going to find someone with good credit, but low income, good credit, but low income. And then you say, look, you like this house? Well, tell you what, I will sell it to you if you rent it for two years. And I'll even use the money that you're paying for rent as a down payment if you like this house. And they're like, oh, OK, so you've got them. Because, see, you want them to be committed. You don't want them to be in and out. Then you have them, you know, this money, which is going back to pay off the loan. You ain't paying the loan. They're paying the loan. Then after a year or two, they go out and get a mortgage or a loan or whatever. You pay off this loan. You go back to the bank again. And you're just like, okay, well, I've had two loans with you. What can you do for me now? And it's like, well, okay, um, Maybe we can do 150. Do you go out and you, you do the same thing over and over again until you get to where you can get a loan of 500, one million dollars. And then this is probably going to take you depending upon your income, your credit, your ambition, your legwork, about two to four years to build a solid LLC profile out of the holding company with their baby a LLC holding the property, but all profits pass up to the holding company. But see, the holding company never, ever, never, ever, ever holds property. It only is, it collects cash. So this is one of the ways that you can develop business credit for real estate. I see all of this stuff. <laughs> I see these people putting this information out and I know this work now. Your, your challenge is going to be finding that bank that reports because you can find a bank that may make the loan, but they don't report to Dun and Bradstreet. And you're going to have to go in and be very firm with your intentions and stuff like this, because this is one of the ways that I built up my business credit profile. Yep. So it works <laughs> because if you treat your business like a business and you're just because essentially you can use your money at first and then use other people's money to achieve this goal. And if you got like a really strong credit profile, you could possibly say, look, I got a renter in this house. Now my income has gone up and can I get another loan? You know, just go in and talk. Now, one of the problems with bankers, people get promoted. So you develop this working relationship with one banker who knows you they're typically going to stay in the branch two to three years. So you need to do as much as you can because then you're going to get someone else you don't know and you got to build a relationship with them. But once you get three, four, five deals under your belt, your business credit profile score is sky high. You're never late. Now, this holding company has a credit file. This holding company is, has checking accounts. This holding company has money just passing through. 
Now, this is something that you can do while you still have your job. <laughs> you know, that, that thing you hate. So, because one of the things is that so many people want to get to the destination so quick without really building anything. And then this is why so many people fail. So this is just a part time gambit that can like literally you just got to find the property and find the banks. I, I'm not going to do everything for you. I gave you this game. Um, so that's just one of the things uh, because I was looking at this information and no one ever said anything about creating a holding company. I'm like, hmm, because what I'm going to do is create a holding company for my real estate business. And this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the same thing I just told you because I know it's going to take a little time because I know that we're about to have a recession. So I'm going to be looking for deals. I'm going to be sitting on cash and I'll be ready to rock and roll. But in the meantime, in the between time, while I'm running six YouTube channels, while I'm running two training platforms, while I'm doing consulting, I'm also in the background building a business credit profile for my real estate business. You, you, now what's funny is you can watch a lot of real estate videos and no one's going to tell you this. You know why? Because they don't know how to do it. They never thought about it. It was always other people's money. OPP, other people's money. If you change your mindset, you can do so much in, in your name and with a little imagination and hustle. It, it's just so many things can be done. So with that, uh, we're at 32 people. We got 32 slots left at 150 bucks. And the first webinar is the art of holding companies. You have all of these videos. I had someone leave a comment. It's like, man, you can find all this stuff for free. Okay. You can find the technical stuff, but the nuance, nah, you can't find that. And actually, the business experience of someone who has created several LLCs, you, nah, you, you can't find that either. But once again, the man or woman who's always looking for something for free is never going to realize the value nor take action because I've watched these guys who went for the free information. And they were just like, all oh, they're very adamant. It's like, Hey, I didn't buy the course. I just got this free information. I got go watch this free information. Uh, I went back and checked a lot of these cats aren't making videos anymore. And I go to their Facebook page and they got jobs over and over and over. I see this. Someone comes up and they like, look guys, you don't have to buy anything for nothing, man. But they don't really seem to get ahead. Uh, actually, let's go way back when I started this channel. And, you know, for some of you who've been here a while, you know how they were on my ass. But many of those people who were for the free information are in the same place they were five, six, seven years ago. Today. Uh, they're not making any money. They're hating on people who make money and some have even fallen out of resale and, and gone back and got jobs and there's nothing wrong with getting a job. But when you are doing resale and you can't make enough money to support yourself, but you used to do videos about resale, that really means that you're not really that good in my estimation because I'll just toot my own horn and pat myself on the back. I haven't had a job in going on 18 years and or 19 or something like that. It's been a long time and I've come on YouTube out of the storage auction business and I've been able to make this thing a go for nine years. Let me say that again. I've been doing this for nine years. This channel is not that big, but I make more money than 95% of YouTubers from this channel. I must be doing something right. And if you don't believe me, go to the channel page and look at my first rough videos. They were so rough. I was using an electronic potato to do my videos. I remember when I had to use a handbrake to reduce the size of the videos. It, it was just a journey. But once again, and do this, 
all of your favorite YouTubers that are making videos, that are talking about business and Shopify and all this other stuff, go ahead and subscribe to them if you haven't and check in every month. Now, a year or two from now, look at how many will not be here. They'll stop making videos, they'll move on to something else. Just notice that because if you stick with it and you go back, you'll find out a lot of these people do not have long-term endurance in business. They just don't. They, they got a, on the algorithm or they learn some fancy new editing tricks, but their business knowledge is deficient. This isn't me being a hater, because if I was a hater, I would be mentioning names. I'm just saying, don't believe me. Do your own research and see how many of these folks that you're following right now are still on YouTube in two years and they're still doing the same thing. So once again, we have 32 slots left. Today is Tuesday, I believe. And uh, what I feel is going to happen is we're going to whittle down to 10 or 15 slots by Friday because it seems to be three to seven a day or something like that. And then it's going to be a mad bum rush. <laughs> so get in early and get in now. And now you get in, you will be eligible for this webinar. I should say series of webinars. I'm going to just let you know the truth. There'll probably be four or five webinars on this. But you can either be enrolled or you can go ahead and pay the thousand bucks because uh, I'll put both those links below and you can still get this information. So you can pay 150 and get this information and a whole lot more, or you can pay a thousand bucks if you only want the art of holding companies. Uh, we'll be getting into a lot of game because just that, like what I just gave you, that's child's play right there. That's just child's play. And once again, see how many YouTubers have, you know, before I said it, have walked you through that process. And they can't walk you through that process because they've never done it. They don't know that some of these small community banks, you can go in and talk to the, the, the uh, bank manager and that bank manager has the full authority to grant loans up to a certain amount. Some of them can grant loans up to a half a million dollars, depending on if it's an older bank and this guy's got a lot of experience. You just don't know until you ask. And you're gonna have to develop a relationship with a banker. You're gonna have to fix your credit and all this other stuff. And then you can start building wealth through real estate and then have bigger goals. Because if you set up the holding company and then you set up LLC A, B, C, D, and you hold properties in there, and then once you either hold the properties or you flip them, you, yeah, guess what? You can use those LLCs again for new property. Because once they're sold, then the title company takes it out of your name, you could just put something else in that LLC. I mean, seriously, uh, I have the Mac Daddy Media, the Cameron Strode. I've got like my total fees last year because I have some LLCs and holding companies y'all don't know about and you'll never know about because I got to keep some stuff to myself. But I think it was a G for all my filing fees and registration. And I think it was a G. Once again. If 800 bucks or $2,000 is freaking you out, your expectations are way too fucking low. They really are. Because, you know, you can get the real estate, keep your job, and then get a side hustle. Do you know if you got a, a $500 a month side hustle, then you did the real estate thing and you kept your job, then you use your side hustle money to fund your real estate business, that uh, $2,000 is like nothing. But we'll talk about all this in the art of, hold, of a holding company, uh, probably be four or five, maybe six webinars because it's a lot of information to go through because I'm not gonna just say, all right, go ahead and create a holding company. I'm gonna say create a holding company, create your checking account this way, how to talk to bank managers, ask questions, all kinds of things that you can do and then get your business credit to the position where you can buy property in your business name. Because I, like I said, I watched a few videos and I've just not seen anything like this. I've seen K 
cash flowing, you know, you buy a property and then you, you know, have a renter in there and you're making three to 400 bucks a month cash flow, which is like four to $6,000 a year, which isn't bad money. It really isn't. But if you got a property and build a solid found solid financial foundation, and then you built a serious side hustle, then you've got the duality of more than just this one thing because everybody's trying to press off onto one thing and make it do so much when, you know, I, I mean, it, it's just funny because I got one client from way, way back and we, we actually went through this and he only has three houses, but they're paid off and they're paid off because of his side hustle. Uh, he had tenants and stuff in there. Yeah, I do a lot of different stuff. And you know how I do this stuff? Usually people reach out to me and they're like, look, this is my situation. I throw them a number. They come at me with money. They don't come at me with like, hey, Glendon, let's talk. I got probably 600 messages in Facebook that I haven't looked at. And I know I'm not going to look at them because that's just exhausting. But anyway, there you go. Uh, the link's below for Hustler Undergrad, 32 spots, 150 bucks a month for 20 months. And the link below is for those of you who want the art of holding companies, it's a G. So there we go. So with that, I'll see you guys later. Tick, 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 tick.